change locations. A little bit easier. They still have to do the umbrella thing. It's so glary out today. So, we've ended the excerpt on one, uh, uh, John chapter 1, where Jesus added to himself humanity and what that means. The Son of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and God was the Word, or the Word was God, but the proper Greek orders, and God, everything that God is, was the Word. So he's God, creator, it goes on to say, the light, the life, came into the world, and it says, Ejanito, he became flesh. We're talking about he added to himself humanity, because God can't change and not become God, and then become a man, and then come become God later, as some contend. So are you, are you ready with that argument? We'll go back to Philippians 2, 7 to 8. Christ Jesus willingly emptied himself of the expression of his deity, making himself of no reputation, by taking the form of a bondservant. In other words, by coming in the likeness of men, in the sense of voluntarily setting aside, deferring his expression as God, through the humanity he added to himself in the form and expression of perfect humanity. So he exclusively expressed his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth, from the conception, birth, of his humanity until his human humanity's death on the cross, with the exception of his transfiguration. The perfect humanity of Christ is referred to by the name Jesus. And when the Christ, the Son of God, took upon himself the form and expression of perfect humanity, he did it in order to pay the penalty for the sins of the whole world. Only the form and expression of Christ Jesus' humanity could have participated in a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, for God's holiness cannot be tainted with the, the guilt of humanity, nor can Christ Jesus' essence as God die or change in any way, because God is immutable. This is beyond my understanding of how God, the Son of God, the, the Word, the life, the light of men, would set aside his expression as God, humble himself to become flesh, Added to, added to himself perfect humanity to die for the sins of the whole world. So when you say, you're, you read in scripture, to, for us commanded to be humbling, uh, to humble ourselves, remember what that's in view of what he did for us. So, Philippians 7, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of men, emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, or being formed in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So the phrase rendered but emptied himself in the case of Christ Jesus, emptied himself, made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, whereupon 2.8 gives further answers to the question of what Jesus emptied himself into and why. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even on the cross, since the part of Christ Jesus' is essence, which is equal to God. Philippians 2.6, John 1.1, 1, 1, is immutable. He cannot change. Then he could not have emptied himself of his divine attributes, his divine essence, as many contend. But he did empty himself in the sense of voluntarily setting aside, deferring his expression as God through the perfect humanity he added to himself. So he exclusively expressed among men when he appeared in the first century, expressed his humanity throughout his humanity's ministry on earth from the conception, birth of his humanity, Matthew 1.18, until his humanity's death on the cross, Philippians 2.8, with the exception of his transfiguration. The perfect humanity of Christ is re referred to by the name Jesus. And when the Christ, the Son of God, took upon himself perfect humanity, he did it in order to pay the penalty for the sins of the whole world, operating exclusively through that humanity. Even when Christ Jesus in his humanity performed miracles, I got in trouble for saying this in Sunday school, he did them via the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit within his human spirit and not through the power of his deity. They said, you don't think Jesus is God? I said, I didn't say that. I said, how he did his miracles, because he told the disciples, you'll do the same, and they weren't God. He did it through his perfect humanity, through the via the power of the Holy Spirit. He got Holy Spirit baptism by John and his water baptism, Jesus did in the River Jordan. So, the indwelling Holy Spirit was received from above by Christ Jesus as visualized as a dove when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And we have the passages there. Although God appeared in pre-incarnate appearances as the angel of the Lord, 
Christ Jesus' appearance in his humanity as Jesus of Nazareth began from the conception birth of his humanity to be continued as part of his essence even unto his humanity's death and resurrection into a glorified human body. So the Son of God, the Word, added to himself his essence as God, perfect humanity. And his humanity will continue forever part of the Christ, the Son of God, <clears throat> both God and man, the hypostatic union. That's inconceivable. I understand what was done, but the capacity to understand it further in details, which Scripture doesn't provide, maybe I'll understand that in my, in my resurrection body a little bit better. But it's, I'm in awe of it. Look at Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. <clears throat> How did the, those who reading who were reading the, the uh, prophets, the Hebrew Bible, understand this? For Isaiah 9, 6 to 7 says, For a child will be born to us, Israel, as a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. I talked to Jehovah Witness one time at Dallas Fort Worth Airport, and he says, it says, Mighty God, not Almighty God. Well, who else is there? Because there is no God besides God. And that's in Isaiah. But people don't put Scripture together, so he walked away in ignorance. Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. How do you call the one born of God in his humanity, born to us, Israel? Government will rest on his shoulders. How do you call him Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, if he's not also God and man? There will be no end to the increase of his government and or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. Eternal. He's eternal. He's God. But he's also man. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. And all the other passages in the Hebrew Bible before the Greek Bible came out talking about the Messiah to come, Hamashiach, the one who will provide salvation to the world through his own sacrifice for sins Isaiah 53 and uh, 55 just as it is plausible to state that a human ruler might empty himself of his ruling power in the sense of deferring the exercise of his ruling power to humble himself humility there in order to take on the form likeness appearance and expression uh, disguised as a servant I'm thinking about a, a famous uh, novel a common man making himself of no reputation in order to accomplish one thing or another, such as what Israel's king Saul did in order to find out what the Philistines were about to do. In reference 1 Samuel 8, 1 to 25. That's interesting. I forgot about that. 1 Samuel 8, 1 to 25. I don't have time to read it here. Go ahead and check it out. <clears throat> and Josiah is disguising himself in order to conduct war in 2 Chronicles 35. So all the more it is plausible for Christ Jesus to empty himself of the expression of his deity to exclusively express himself in his humanity, perfect humanity, in order to endure the punishment for the sins of the whole world, to propitiate humanity and give man an opportunity to be saved by grace through a moment of faith alone and his propitiation alone. That's in Philippians 3, 8 to 11, and 1 John 5, 1, and especially Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Memorize that. I quote that a lot of times when people don't Say you have to you have to have works, but works don't save you. Uh, but it's required to to uh, verify that you are saved, and so on and so forth. And just read Ephesians two eight and nine, and then they'll walk away, but they won't answer. Only the form and expression of Christ Jesus as humanity could have participated in His sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. For God's holiness cannot be tainted with the guilt of humanity, nor can Christ Jesus' essence as God die or change in any way, because God is immutable. So Christ Jesus' deity remained and will always remain deity, immutable, without change. For God not only created the universe, <clears throat> he say, sustains it by the very power of his being. So if he ceased to be God, the universe would disappear. If God were to die, the universe would pass out of existence because nothing can exist apart from the sustaining power of God. Hence, God could not have public perished on the cross. His humanity did. Look at Colossians 1, 5 to 15 to 17. He, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, invisible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
holds things together. He's the Son of God. He's both God and man. And you look at if you looked at the God man in the first century, uh, it wouldn't be feasible for me to understand except through Scripture that He's holding the universe together and dying on the cross for the sins of the whole world, at least His humanity. So Philippians 2 a Jesus Christ in his humanity on the cross was forsaken by God and paid for the sins of all mankind. That's being humble. Since Christ Jesus is God and man, and since his deity is immutable and cannot die, then only his humanity died on the cross, corroborating that he exclusively expressed his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth from the conception, birth of his humanity throughout his humanity's death on the cross, with the exception of his transfiguration. Then Christ Jesus, his human body, was resurrected from the dead together with his human soul and human spirit into a glorified body by God, forever an essence of the Son of God. Which personality of the Godhead raised Jesus from the dead? God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God is one God, raised him from the dead. There are separate passages that say each one raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So, Philippians 2.8, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So Christ Jesus, in his humanity, was forsaken by God in the sense of having a broken spiritual connection with God in his humanity for three hours before his humanity died on the cross. And I think of this all the time. Well, who did Jesus pray to when he prayed to the Father? That means he's not God. His humanity prayed to God the Father who is also God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, one God, three personalities. So when he was forsaken, it was his mentality, his soul, his human spirit that was completely out of fellowship with God during which time he paid for the sins of the whole world, 1 John 2, 2. So Christ Jesus, in his humanity, endured the punishment for the sins of the whole world for all of eternity, compressed into three hours while on the cross. Further explanation of how this was accomplished by the Almighty Creator God through the humanity of Christ Jesus is not provided in Scripture. If you find other passages that might give me a little more enlightenment, let, let me know. Email me. Since Christ Jesus is God and, and man, his deity could not die, so the many prophecies and accounts in Scripture of Christ Jesus dying on the cross can only have his humanity in view, his human body, human soul, and human spirit. We have references in 53, Isaiah 53, and Romans 5, and so on. This corroborates that he set aside the expression of his deity throughout his humanity's ministry on earth, culminating, culminating in his propitiatory sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. So when Christ Jesus in his humanity died spiritually, his humanity was separated from fellowship with God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Then, just before he physically died, his human soul and human spirit were spiritually restored to fellowship with God, which occurred when he committed his fellow, his committed his human spirit to the Father, just before his human body would physically die. Notice that he continued to set aside the expression of his deity throughout the entire time on the cross, even while suffering for the sins of the whole world. Is that humbling himself? And then his humanity died physically on the upon the cross. His physical body ceased to function. It became inactive, not non-existent, as some contend, as does any human physical body that dies. After physically dying, his human, human soul and spirit continued to function outside of his physical body, as happens to all humans when they physically die. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, Paul said. And his hope and his soul and human spirit, like those human souls and spirits who are children of God, born of God, continued to be present with God in fellowship with him, as it is with all of those who are children of God, born of God, so it is with the firstborn of all creation. Let's take a look at Romans 8, 29, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 8. If I can do this single-handed here. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 8. Well, we know that if the earthly tent physical bodies, which is our house, is torn down. We have a building from God, a house not made with human with hands, eternal in the heavens. A physical body. We have a body building from God, a house not made with hands. For indeed, in this house, 
We groan, longing to be clothed.